This game has had, to say the least, a rocky couple of years. After a surprising shot into the mainstream in 2019 during a Twitch Drops event, Escape from Tarkov, a game which should theoretically have never seen more than marginal niche popularity in the survival tactical shooter genre, has taken the PC FPS gaming world by storm. The game's influence can be felt across the industry, actually, spawning mobile and virtual reality <clears throat> copycats and, albeit with fluctuating strength, remaining as a staple for Twitch and YouTube viewers ever since. However, people have notoriously mixed feelings about this game. So much so, in fact, that many content creators who stream, record, or edit content based around Escape from Tarkov, myself included, have seen a repeating sentiment over the last couple of years. I love watching this game, but I can't bring myself to actually play it. But something changed. I've been playing Escape from Tarkov since January of 2022, much less than many out there, and I've been creating content around it seriously for about half that time, since around the middle of 2023. Never since I first got into the game have I seen the prevailing sentiment that Tarkov right now is in the best state that it's ever been in. The state of Escape from Tarkov over the last couple years has been, to say the least, a roller coaster. I could go and list every single divisive issue with the game since 2019, which has plagued the community sentiment about it, but long story short, there has always been a very vocal group of people who say that the game is dying, and that it's in the worst place that it's ever been, and a slightly less vocal but very present group of people who love the game, who are passionate for it and want it to change for the better, and yet every one of this group of people would be hard pressed not to admit that at the very least, the game is divisive. Like really, really divisive. So why? Well, I actually think that that's what Nikita Boyanov, the lead developer at Battlestate Games, as well as the whole team of BSG, have been trying to crack down on for years now. The complaints about the game's meta are wide-ranging and completely split. Some say the game is too fast, players jump 25 feet in the air, jiggle peeking with their recoilless laser beam M4s, firing 60 round magazines of armor-piercing rounds, dropping any player who doesn't know life the game for 40 hours a week with a head eyes before they can blink. Or the recoil is too high. My highly trained PMC holds onto his 5.56 rifle with the strength of a preschooler. I go into an asthmatic attack every time I'm jogging for more than 12 seconds with a full backpack. Either armor is way too effective, the gear gap is too split, or armor is too heavy for how useless it is. I can't enjoy fast-paced PvP due to inertia, or players are too fast with their high-level skills, and casual players can never compete. Either everyone has too much access to high-level AP bullets, or please let everyone have access to high-level AP bullets. Now, this is just me sort of listing some of the divisive opinions on balancing that I've seen during various stages of the game that I've personally taken part in. This doesn't even begin to touch on cheating or performance, two of the largest issues the community has been most vocal about over the last couple of years. These latter issues have been discussed to death, and honestly, I think that the residing sentiment for most players is, yeah, if these things got better, it would significantly improve the state of the game. Simple as that. While balancing the game is one thing and, quote, fixing, cheating, or performance is another entirely, the devs have been verifiably hard at work to remedy both of these for the last couple of years. And I honestly did feel, at a certain point, that no matter what they did, they would disappoint someone. No matter how hard they tried to fix or balance the game, it would never be good enough. And while I honestly do think that some people still feel this way, with patch 0.14, BSG did something that I honestly never thought that they would be able to pull off. Some way, somehow it seems that they actually kind of pleased everyone. Now, this isn't to say that the patch wasn't without its hiccups, and that there aren't many issues that still need ironing out. Someone's in the middle of the street. You're, that's not you, is it? In the middle of the street? No, not me. Someone's in my building. Okay, I see you. I see him. He's upstairs. Oh, I'm dead. There's somebody in the stairway with me. I'm dead. Okay. Zero sound. So that's good. I'm not saying that Tarkov is fixed, that it's perfect, that it's ready for release, not by a long shot. But it's like we were lost in the woods, stuck in brambles for the last few years, getting further and further entangled in the depths of code and lighting bugs and balancing issues, recoil and inertia and redesign and reworks. And somehow, now for the first time, I feel like I can see the light through the trees. Evidence of this can be found if you tune into literally any content surrounding Tarkov right now. All I see everywhere I look is fans going, this is the best patch yet. The game truly feels pretty amazing right now. I have never seen this before. And honestly, 
While I absolutely feel the same way, I'm biased towards my own tastes and the things that I personally like about the game, and there have been patches and changes that I've loved in the past that others really hated. So, what changed? Why do people as a whole like this patch so much, and is it just hopium, or is the game actually getting better? Firstly, it feels like this patch brought the end to a feeling of stagnation with Tarkov's mechanics and features that had plagued the community for years. The thing that you'll probably see discussed the most by any creator or fan is the rework of the recoil system. System. And yeah, that's a big part of it, but it's actually more complicated than that the recoil is better. Any player who actually played Tarkov like a serious amount of the game over the last couple years would probably agree that right now the game feels completely different. And these changes to the movement, aiming, inertia, and recoil systems have it's actually hard to describe. Best way I could put it is they made your player input make more sense. What I mean by this is that Tarkov's movement and shooting systems were previously quite opaque. It's actually one of the things that I personally loved about the game. It felt clunky. It felt heavy. It felt the least like a video game of any shooter that I've played. If you watch my recent video titled Escape from Tarkov is not fun, you might get an idea of the sentiment that I've had around the game ever since I started. The brutally challenging core mechanics of the game truly assisted, I think, in this incredible level of catharsis when you were able to pull anything off. Just just physically making it from one side of a map to the other took a degree of skill, of knowledge, of planning, intelligence, and correct execution of luck. Nothing about the game felt easy, intuitive, or simple. If that sounds like the worst possible experience that a game could give you, well, yeah, that's how a lot of people actually felt. Obviously not everyone, because the game has retained popularity for years, and part of that had to do with the fact that the depth of Tarkov's mechanics actually makes it one of the most constantly satisfying, rewarding, and freedom-granting games ever. From the macro to micro scale, you can kind of do anything that you want, and this has allowed for a slew of content creation opportunities, and is part of why the game has such a wealth of videos and streamers who have been dedicated to it as a platform for entertainment. But here's the thing, in order to get to that point, to have a feeling of control over the game, to feel like you understood it enough to be able to play the way that you wanted, that took around a thousand hours of gameplay. Yeah, I'm not kidding or being hyperbolic here. I always legitimately tell players who are relatively new to the game that around the thousand hour mark, you will begin to improve at and understand the game. I'm serious. Up until that point, you are basically learning, struggling, and stumbling your way through grasping the core mechanics of the game, because they are so complex and so opaque that it actually takes that much time just playing the game before you actually can be in the improving phase rather than just the learning phase. Don't get me wrong, the learning phase of the game is actually one of its best parts. Discovering how to navigate a map to discover loot locations, paths, and extracts is one of the coolest, most immersive, and memorable experiences in any game that I've ever played. But even as one of the biggest shills of Tarkov's base mechanics that you'll ever run into, I will be the first to admit that early wipe Tarkov was, in the past, pretty rough. It's actually why I was one of the few people with the unpopular opinion that late game Tarkov was actually 100% more fun than early game Tarkov. Once I had my high level skills, my tier 5 armors, and my meta mark 47 mutants, I was able to run around freely having fun and dunking on lower level players. And as fun as that was for me, it was actually a huge problem with the game, for a couple of reasons. First of all, getting to that point in a wipe took time. It meant that I was spending a lot more time suffering up until that point, running my garbage 75 recoil 545 AKs, bouncing rounds like BBs off of higher gear PMCs. I legitimately didn't like early wipe that much at all. And a big part of the reason was early wipe gear, skills, and ammunition were not only objectively worse in every way to higher level stuff, they were just straight up harder to use. You weren't just at a gear disadvantage, you were at a usability disadvantage, meaning that a lower level player had to significantly outplay a higher level player player in order to even remotely compete. Combine that with how much harder it was to kill AI with early game wipe gear and skills, and you have one of the steepest, most grindy learning curves known to man. Now, there was a point where I would have argued that this was the whole point of the game. A big part of the reason why I was able to put in that time, suffering through peacekeeping mission and humanitarian supplies with old Tarkov's recoil mechanics, was that getting through that pain was legitimately satisfying. The idea that you needed to endure that suffering in order to taste the sweetness of high-level PMC gameplay is an aspect of the game that I still do to a degree agree agree with as part of the loop. I think that had Tarkov's core mechanics continued the way that they were, I'd still thoroughly enjoy the game. But there are those out there who've played far more than I have, who just got sick of that grind to even feel like they could compete. And I'm sure that over time, I would have potentially gotten a bit sick of it too. 
With the changes to Tarkov's base mechanics of movement, weight, hitboxes, ergonomics, and recoil, low-level PMCs are still under-geared and outgunned compared to high-level PMCs, but the core mechanics just feel more intuitive now. They feel good to play. I keep seeing comments stating that old Tarkov's mechanics made one feel like they didn't want to engage in fights, because fighting just felt bad as a low-level PMC. What you got as a result of this were a lot of low-level PMCs who would, for lack of a better word, rat. As in, play as passively as possible, because as they were outgunned, outgeared, outarmored, outskilled, and I mean in-game skills, not your actual skill as a player, the only advantage these people felt that they had was the element of surprise. Whether or not this was actually the case, the game certainly made you feel this way. Therein lied the core of the issue. The way the game made you feel had a direct correlation to the way people felt they needed to play. The first couple days of the wipe for patch 0.14 were the first time I truly enjoyed early wipe PvP. It's still very hard, it's still challenging as all hell, in fact, the challenge factor had actually been turned up, but in a good way. Because everyone can kind of compete now, it's not just who has the better gun, but who knows how to use the gun that they have. And let me tell you, that intensity of combat that I think Tarkov has always gone for is back in a big way. A sentiment that you'll always see come up in the late wipe versus early wipe argument is the availability of high penetrating ammo. Basically in Tarkov, the way the health system works is you die if a vital body part is destroyed, or if your health is zero. I had originally written a detailed description of how armor used to work in this game. It was very boring. Think of it this way, in old Tarkov, if you wear Bad armor, you can die to any bullet pretty much instantly. You wear good armor, and you can usually only be killed instantly by highly penetrating bullets. Bullets that can get through your protection. That was partially because the body armor was portrayed in a very unrealistic way due to the game's hitboxes. Any vest which claimed to cover the thorax or stomach covered the entirety of that area of the body. This meant that essentially the good gear in the game was this. High tier chest armor and weapons which could fire high penetrating rounds with sufficient damage to kill a player to the chest or the head in one or two shots. Ammos which did high flesh damage, i.e. could hurt your body but couldn't penetrate armor, were viable, but only if you aimed for the legs. Like I said, body armors covered the entire chest area, so you'd have a hard time taking down someone aiming for the chest, the body armor would just eat those rounds. With this wipe, armor is completely different. I'm not gonna break it down with intense detail. What I'll say is this, it does a better job of portraying how body armor actually works in real life than almost any game that I've seen. Armored vests IRL are essentially a vest made up of a variety of combined materials, some ballistically rated and some not, with bulletproof, big quotations around that word there, plates inserted into them in vital areas such as the chest or back. These plates are rated for various levels of protection. This is exactly how it works in Tarkov now. A very small area containing the ballistic plate in the armor will provide the most protection from rounds and all other areas will provide far less significant or no protection. Essentially now, far more of the body is unprotected by even the highest coverage body armor, meaning a player wearing a level 6 protection vest can still be shot in the throat or upper chest and instantly killed. You may ask, okay, so then why wear body armor at all? Well, because in Tarkov, any advantage that you can have is still an advantage. It's just that now, a player with access to high-end armor isn't necessarily able to literally win a fight based on their ability to eat every single round that a low-level player can throw at them. This, in combination with the changes to player movement and recoil, are going to, I Think make Tarkov a far more playable game for people who are less experienced or join later than, God forbid, a week into the wipe. Making it so that low-level players can always compete, in some people's eyes, could negate the entire point of the grind for those high-level kits. Why would I wear tier 6 armor when some noob with magnum buckshot can just head-neck me the second that I peek a corner? Well, this is where I think that Tarkov made its best change to its own formula that we've seen literally since the game came out. Nikita has always talked about how he hates metas. He didn't like the fact that people all ran the exact same kind of kits, the same gun builds. There are these tutorials that you'd see online. Here is the best low-recoil M4 setup, and you'd just see that gun everywhere where everybody would be using it. Here's the thing, time will only tell, and of course there will still be metas which arise, and guns, attachments, and gear which provide an objectively better advantage than others. That's the name of the game for Tarkov, that aspect of it is actually key. But by making more weapons in the game viable, by adjusting the game's core technical mechanics, meta weapons could now become more of a choice than a necessity, a true role-playing experience. There are thousands of attachments in the game, scopes, handles, collimators, stocks, lasers, muzzle adapters, devices, brakes, suppressors, and yet people basically run a tiny fraction of them because they are the meta. And with how Tarkov used to work, if you weren't running meta, you were basically actively choosing to be at a disadvantage. 
I think that we could enter an era where people can play the kits that they want, the weapons that they want, the attachments that they want for aesthetic value, for individual choice, rather than because if you want to really compete, you need to run the meta gear. There are so many weapons, so much gear and potential options in the game, and we've never seen a version of the game where all of it actually sees play. Personally, that iteration of the game is the version of Tarkov that I want to take part in. Giving players ways to learn how to play the way that they want is key to the health of Tarkov going forward into the future, in my opinion. And I want to talk about Escape from Tarkov Arena for a second here, because while I think that it's a flawed game, I actually really, really think that it has promise as a partner game for EFT. I love these new mechanics and gunplay, and I think that a big part of the reason that I'm loving them is that I've gotten the opportunity to test them risk-free over and over in Arena. The new left shoulder swap, for example. Without Arena, I would probably have gotten far less opportunity to actually test this mechanic mechanic out, and having tried it out, it's really cool. If you're confused about what the point of this is, let me explain as concisely as possible. Escape from Tarkov, unlike most first-person shooter games you may have played, doesn't have first-person animations. That's when the 3D model of your gun on screen from a first-person perspective is actually a separate overlay from what your third-person character actually looks like, and separate still from how ballistics are rendered and interacting with other entities in the game. Games like Apex Legends and Call of Duty have these separate first-person animations. In Tarkov, you have a character model, and your first-person person camera is placed over your character model's right eye. That means that what you see from your perspective is literally the same model that other people, i.e. enemies, see. When you peek right-handed, your barrel and right shoulder will stick out first from someone else's perspective. If you peek from the left while right-handed, your entire left shoulder and head will stick out behind cover before your gun or your right eye, which remember, you're seeing through, meaning that a left peek in Tarkov is death. That is, it was until they added the left shoulder swap. Now, you can essentially peek left with your gun coming out of cover first, meaning that left peeks are now super viable. And with a lot of new people unused to this new mechanic or too lazy to get good at it, it's now a great way to take people by surprise. Long story short, Arena is a great sandbox to learn how to play the game's mechanics, but especially to play those mechanics using and against some very strange and up until you grind much, much higher in the trees of presets, pretty bad kits, or presets as they're called in Arena. What playing a few hours of Arena has taught me is that with time, you can really effectively play against people significantly better geared than you if your technical skills improve. Arena also introduced a long-awaited feature, a kill cam. And while a direct after-death kill cam will probably never come to EFT for obvious reasons, there is a chance that they will implement it as a post-raid feature, where you can watch your killer's perspective after that match has completely ended and all PMCs and scavs have left the raid. This is the best tool against cheating the players themselves have gotten their hands on since Tarkov came out. So yeah, that topic. Let's talk about it. So I get a lot of hate for this every time that I bring it up, but I've played a few thousand hours of Tarkov and cheating has never really bothered me. Yeah, I run into a sus player here and there and there've been times when it's worse than others, but as a whole, I think that my personal mentality against cheating has helped it never affect my enjoyment or stance on the game. Very long story short, I feel like getting killed by a cheater is just sort of not worth complaining or worrying about. If that person was cheating, if they were gonna kill me anyway, then there's nothing I really could have done about it. So why care? There's also just the fact that in my opinion, a lot of deaths people report as cheating are just them getting shot in the head and not understanding the multitude of game mechanical reasons that a player might have outplayed them. Another one on the right, another one, another one. Whoa, I'm dead. Obviously, this isn't always the case. <sighs> I'm already bored talking about cheating. I seriously just don't care about it. If there are so many cheaters in the game, why am I as a legit player able to be so successful? Either it means that there aren't that many cheaters or there are, and I'm still just better than them at the game. So whatever, it doesn't affect my enjoyment. I will be the first to admit that I'm highly biased by the servers that I play on and by my playstyle, etc. But I guess that that's just sort of my point. I personally just don't have that much of an issue with cheating in the game, and I'm not gonna let somebody else's poor experience affect my personal enjoyment. Basically, I think that all people should just play the game for themselves rather than jump into this mob mentality based on other people's experiences. At the end of the day, if all cheaters were eliminated from the game, it would obviously be a great thing, and it would massively boost the popularity of EFT to people who have been hesitant about it because of this very issue. I swear to god, if I continue to see this brain dead conspiracy theory that BSG are actively helping cheat providers create cheats for their game, 
Anyway, this is all to say that I think that BSG has actually gotten a bit jaded about the cheating problem too. Until recently, we've seen, at least in my experience, an incredible increase in the effectiveness of the anti-cheat on EFT since the implementation of new backend features and stuff like community reporting. And I think that with kill cam mechanics coming to EFT at some point, this is only just going to get better. The main takeaway that I could only suggest people to focus on is that BSG is paying attention to this kind of thing, and they are actually taking community feedback to heart about it. With that to the side, we're brought to maybe the biggest W about this new EFT. Improvements to maybe the biggest complaint about the game besides recoil or cheating, the game's performance. EFT runs so much better this patch. It's actually sort of staggering in my opinion. Yeah, I do personally have pretty solid hardware, but it is in no means top of the line, and everyone that I've talked to has noticed, Tarkov just runs noticeably better now. The new map Ground Zero runs like a dream, a steady 130 to 140 FPS on my system. I have never gotten such high frames on any Tarkov map, and yeah, that includes Factory. The last couple wipes have been rough when it comes to performance. Streets of Tarkov, which albeit absolutely blew my mind with its complexity and design when I first got my hands on it, ran when when it first came out, well, it ran like shit. Even the second expansion to Streets saw extremely sporadic performance, 100 plus FPS for some players and literally 15 to 30 FPS for others with like pretty similar hardware. It was all over the place to the degree that BSG have clearly made it an utmost priority, and they've actually halted any major additions to the Streets of Tarkov map until they can get the performance running smoothly on more people's systems. It's already running way better this wipe than last patch, and I hope that they continue to improve it because Streets is legitimately the most complex and coolest video game location that I have ever played on. It's actually staggering that a map this large and this infinitely complex runs on like any computers at all, and when they do get it feature complete and running smoothly, it'll be like nothing else in the industry. Escape from Tarkov is currently in perhaps the best state that it's ever been in. But more importantly, I think that if BSG keeps this progress up, the game is poised to take over the tactical shooter genre completely. And yeah, I mean the tactical shooter genre, not the extraction shooter genre. Escape from Tarkov did not invent the idea of the extraction shooter, but it is inarguably the most popular iteration on it. But that genre is a little bit more niche. And because Tarkov has always been plagued by the complexities and issues mentioned throughout this video, it's never quite captured the audience of the constantly growing larger umbrella genre, the tactical shooter. Games like Arma, Ground Branch, Ready or Not, Squad, Insurgency, or even more mainstream titles like Rainbow Six or Payday, fans of these tactical modern military FPS games often have a hard time wanting to get interested in Tarkov for a number of reasons, but some of these may begin to wane if BSG does make certain decisions. For one, the inclusion of the new map Ground Zero is one of BSG's smartest in recent years. The map is beautiful, complex, and rich with challenge. It's also now the location of the game's four main starting quests, and is locked so that only players under level 20 can queue onto it, i.e. it's both lore and gameplay-wise the start location for PMCs in Tarkov. This map is by no means easy. Oh, I found the damn thing. The God, I found it. Oh my God. As soon as I walked into it, I recognized it immediately and I was like, oh no. I think that a lot of people misconstrued the starter map as a beginner map. Rather, it's just a location where every key mechanic of the game is put on display. But most importantly, you will run into at the highest a level 20 PMC. One of the biggest things keeping tactical shooter fans or FPS fans in general from trying out Escape from Tarkov is that unless they've joined right at the start of the wipe, they'll be potentially going up against people absolutely juiced to the teeth with high-level gear, and for all the reasons that we've discussed earlier, that can be a problem for some people. We've already talked about how low-level players have been given a huge automatic leg up with this patch, but Ground Zero actually takes it further. If you've ever wanted to try the game out knowing that for sure you'll only be going up against people in relatively a similar gear bracket to you, well, now you can. By the way, the map is really cool and fun even aside from this, so luckily BSG did confirm that they will in the future be creating two separate instances of Ground Zero, one where you can queue with only low levels and one for all players. As someone who loves nothing more than to play in pretty urban environments, this is just a great thing for me to hear. There is no hardcore tactical shooter out there with such a diverse and, in my opinion, gorgeous, immersive, and interestingly designed selection of locations to fight on. It's part of the reason that I got into this game in the first place, rather than getting into, say, Squad or Insurgency. I think that if BSG play their cards right, EFT could offer the urban tactical shooter experience that many people have dreamed of ever since the early days of Arma 2's DayZ mod, a game rich with challenge, which makes you feel like a small part of its richly complex and beautiful world, but which also gives you the tools to grasp some degree of control over your own survival in it. Mr. BTR, come back. <laughs> so, the future of EFT. It's uncertain to say the least, but uncertain for the first time in some really promising ways. When I said earlier that the fact that this game runs at all is sort of a miracle, I meant it. 
The game, if you weren't aware, runs on highly modified iterations on the engine for Contract Wars, the browser-based PvP shooter from 2012, which is the basis for not only Tarkov's core mechanics, textures, and graphical style, but for its setting and lore as well. Very long and complex tale of development later, and well, this game is running on some seriously outdated code and infrastructure. While BSG have already spent years reworking, tweaking, and fixing their shoddy, inexperienced work from a decade ago, they are taking it further. This year, they plan to fully begin transitioning the engine to Unity 2023, which will come with a complete graphical rework of the game. That means new visuals, vegetation, and likely a new lighting engine. We don't exactly know the degree to which this rework will change Tarkov as we know it functionally, but Nikita says that at least on the graphics side, the new version looks like a completely new game. The new visuals of EFT, and so far it looks really differently, and uh, it actually kind of frightens me because literally the game looks like different game and, and it all will be done of course on unity the almighty unity God help us. With this, we'll be continuing work fixing up performance on all maps, completely reworking prop models, which they've actually already done a number of times, and generally rebuilding the game for a more modern and thus, hopefully, less bogged down development pipeline into the future. Fun stuff like weapon paint and customization, mounting and bipod functionality have been teased for years, but we can see for a fact that they're still being worked on and will likely come in 2024 as well. We can see, for example, BSG recording audio for bipods in this devlog video that they recently posted. Perhaps most excitingly though, Tarkov is actually finally in a place that I and many others and it seems Nikita himself were unsure that it would ever actually live to see. Tarkov is, in 2024, getting ready to make the final push towards a 1.0 release. Now, I'm sure that we'll hear more specifics about what this actually means and what kind of updates we should expect from a 1.0 version of Tarkov, but on the New Year's special live stream in December 2023, Nikita explained where the company is at. Literally, I dreamed that someday there is only one location will be left, the terminal. The terminal is the final location. My dreams came true and uh, that's really good. Terminal was teased years ago in live action content as a location where UN and Russian armed forces hold the last path across the water out of Tarkov City. It's gonna be a substantial location guarded by military and possibly one of the first locations to require a new map to map travel system that has also been teased for years. Most importantly though, it's a location that will be part of the game's main story where your PMC will be able to, after completing many quests, make the decision to leave Tarkov behind. We don't really know what this means in detail, and this is intentional. The main story of Tarkov will not be part of its beta testing period, the beta that anyone who's played Tarkov has been taking part in since 2016. When we do see Terminal, we'll be seeing it as part of the final release version of Escape from Tarkov. What the main story will bring is, of course, the actual story of the game, but more importantly, a close to Tarkov's game cycle. Every iteration that we've seen of Tarkov up until now, every wipe, every patch, has given us a taste of Tarkov's final intended loop, but an open-ended one. There is legit legitimately no objective reason to play Tarkov's quests. At least there's no way to win the game. Getting good at Tarkov, ranking up, acquiring better skills, gear, weapons, and ammo, it basically just means that you're more easily able to get more money and get more kills. But as we all know, this leads nowhere. At the end of however many months, there's always been a wipe. You've always lost everything. It's a pretty much pointless cycle of blood and money, and to be able to win, to actually escape, is the final door out of this endless cycle. Every quest in Tarkov right now is actually the equivalent to side quests in an RPG. They are story adjacent, but the main story itself has yet to be seen. There are hints everywhere at what the story will be about, and it's quite intriguing, but we'll never see just part of it before it's done. The entire thing will come all at once with Escape from Tarkov 1.0. So that's BSG's plan for this year, 2024, to get the game to that point. But what happens when the game is complete? When you finish the story, when you've escaped from Tarkov, what then? Tarkov was, at its origin, planned to be a smallish project bringing the developers enough funding to make the game they really wanted to make. Russia 2028, a large-scale open-world survival single-player RPG set in a post-apocalyptic landscape in Tarkov's universe. It seems that for a long time, even after Tarkov grew in popularity and eventually out of proportion, that this was still the main goal, and maybe that game is still on the horizon somewhere in the future. But it's clear over the last year or so that BSG hit a turning point with their mentality around Tarkov. In part of the promotion for the spin-off Arena, Nikita and the BSG team toured the world with the game, showing it off in Germany, Japan, and the US at TwitchCon in Las Vegas, Nevada. 
it seems that Nikita, despite having developed this game and worked with this team on it for years, had never really gotten outside the studio to see the reality of the people who, despite their complaints and frustrations, really love his game. The game that has, of course, had a profound impact not only on shooter games as a genre, but more importantly, which has had a deep impact on people's personal lives, and not in the negative ways that you often see arise online. People have developed lasting friendships over their love for this game. People have started careers with this game. The course of people's entire lives have been changed because of this game. And I think that walking the streets of Tokyo and Las Vegas and Cologne, Nikita got to meet those people face to face and see the human reality and passion for the project that he started so many years ago. And I think that truly, BSG are now entirely committed to not only finishing the game in the best state that they possibly can, but to continue to constantly support it after release and to engage actively with the community for years to come. There are many things about Tarkov that need to change, that could be improved or expanded upon, ironed out or reworked, for it to truly reach its full potential. And we'll see where it goes, because I personally think that the potential EFT has is borderline immeasurable. I'm sure that the game will see its fair share of growing pains before release, and there will likely be another controversy here and another outrage there. But what we have seen, is that with this most recent update of the game, BSG's passion is there more than ever, and the naysayers against Tarkov's development expecting its death or hoping for its decline have been proven wrong time and time again. Many people who hated the game's older mechanics are currently enjoying it in a way that they never could before, and people who have loved the game for what it was, who put up with it and adapted to its niche complexity and strangeness, well, from what I can tell, they're getting even more enjoyment out of it now. And the changes that we just got haven't, in my opinion, in any way dumbed down the game or made it any less of the hardcore, difficult, incredibly painful and rewarding game that it's always been. The core idea of Escape from Tarkov is so strong that it keeps longtime players invested, brings back old ones, and attracts new fans all the time. And with the game constantly updating and reworking itself alongside with the far more approachable and casual spin-off arena, the audience for the world of Tarkov is bigger than it's ever been. Well, going forward towards release, we may one day see a version where players are able to escape the city. The gaming industry will not, in my opinion, be able to escape the lasting effect that Tarkov has had on it for the foreseeable future. Thanks for watching. I'm not gonna lie, I made the video Escape from Tarkov is not fun before the patch came out, and I wrote it with the expectation that it could be an enjoyable and thoughtful piece of commentary whether or not the patch was received well. Honestly, I kind of expected it to be received really poorly. This video may have just seemed like me gushing over how much I love this game, but legitimately, I think that the overwhelmingly positive response to the state of escape from Tarkov right now is not something that should be ignored, and I just felt compelled to talk about what it means, not only for longtime fans, but for those who have been watching curiously from the sidelines, those who have taken breaks or dropped the game altogether. This wasn't a game review or a recommendation, it wasn't objective or all-encompassing. It was my opinion on the state of the game. But in my opinion, if you've ever been interested in Tarkov but haven't picked it up, if you do own it but haven't given it much time, or even if you're a veteran who moved away from the game, for anyone. This is a fantastic wipe, maybe the best ever, and this would be a really good time to try the game out for the first time if you haven't, or again, if you have. I'm having a lot of fun. The snow is beautiful. Maybe I'll see you out there. If you do, feel free to say hi and maybe we can cooperatively extract together. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leaving a like really does help me out. And let me know what you thought. Use the salute emoji or the word salute like before to show that you watched up until this point. Subscribe if you haven't for more like this video, because there is a lot more yapping where that came from. The next video will likely be breaking down some of the very interesting core ideas of the upcoming game Grey Zone Warfare and its fascinatingly realistic take on the politics of private military companies. Make sure that you're here for that one if it sounds interesting to you. I'm also going to talk about other games that I'm looking forward to like Road to Vostok, Marathon, and Beautiful Light, and I might even talk about what some games have been doing wrong and how the industry can avoid those those same mistakes. I hope that you have a good rest of your day and stay safe out there. I will see you soon. Demirko, show Capybara, please. This is the next logo of BSG, the Capybara. We decided to do a rebranding and we decided the next year we decided to make the games for Capybara Simulator. Capybara Simulator, hardcore one. You live as a capybara, you have fun as a capybara, and you die horribly. Of course I'm joking. <laughs>